going on here? Yeah, I mean, this is um, actually today was the first time anybody's seen this product from Scale Electric. Um, just to introduce myself, my name's Simon. I work for Scale Electric on the uh, marketing and licensing side of things. So my role within the business really is to help decide what products we make, what cars we do. I get to go to all the race meets, uh, media days, see race teams, go to car museums, all that sort of stuff, and then help the business decide what, what models we're going to make, what new toolings, new cars, and also what new liveries. So, I mean, it you know, sounds... Awful. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, stuff, mate. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, have, having to go to race meetings. I mean, oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> when 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 racing's happening, obviously. Um, so, can you can you clearly see everything that's going on over here? Yeah, I can see our new our new box art for one of our big sort of flagship products this year on the screen. I can see your your pad ready to go. Ready to go. Good. And as a little cheeky little thing, there we are. There's your. There's your logo, did it, a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's cool. That's right, isn't it? There we are. So, uh, yeah, so, so had a little practice earlier. So, yeah, in terms of doing that, I haven't practiced this at all. Um, so how it works is I draw the entire image uh, without taking the pen off the paper. Um, so you know, the, the, the outline as such is done that way. So I'm going to be aiming to do all three cars and a bit of the background. Um, so this is the... The Colin Chapman Team Lotus Triple Pack. So that's quite a tongue twister, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's full size. That's just the genius of Colin Chapman Team Lotus Triple Pack. It's a, uh, it's a real longest title we can go for on this one. So we've got the Lotus 25, which is one of our latest uh, Formula One cars yep. from the early 1960s. We've got the 49, which is uh, very famous Formula One car from the late 1960s, early 90s, very early 70s. And the 72, which is sort of came after the 49 and sort of heralded the. Uh, era of sort of cool. more, more looking 1970s era of Formula 1 cars and the only was just to put it together three of them in the same pack because all three cars obviously were designed by Colin Chapman all three cars are Lotuses they're all driven by very famous drivers the, the 25 is actually the first Grand Prix victory for the 25 which was in the 1962 Belgian Grand Prix at the old spa the proper scary nuts spa yeah um, scarier than the one today if anyone wants to give that a Google it's some there's an amazing picture I found when doing the research for that car of Jim Clark flat out through one of the quick bends. He's metres away from a house. There's no guardrails. There's no armcos. There's just a field and a bank to go into if he made a mistake. And while he's going around that corner, he's got one hand on the wheel and the other one is flipping a set of bees to the photographer. <laughs> it's an absolutely amazing photograph of, of Jim Clark really driving the wheels off something. Awesome. Well, what um, I'm going to do... 49 what? is from... Well, I'm going to start. I'm going to start drawing whilst you're start explaining. Um, but as we go along, we'll just discuss all things scale electrics. Obviously, this set, um, and also some of the other things that you've been been involved with as well. So I'm going to start drawing, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. 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 So the, the one in the middle, obviously, is the, is the 49, and we chose that one because it's the first Grand Prix victory that Lotus 49 had uh, in the. Um, Gold Leaf Colours. It's the Spanish Grand Prix of 68, and it's got another famous Lotus driver in it, which is uh, Graham Hill. So it's really cool to do another. We've done a few Graham Hill cars now. Really cool to be able to do that sort of famous crash helmet of his that Damon obviously wore as well, and with Gold Leaf Colours on it, and it, it, it looks really cool. And, and the final one in the set is the uh, 72 from the Spanish Grand Prix of 72, which is fitted out his car. It's the first Grand Prix victory for uh, JPS Lotus 72. So all three cars have got a really cool sort of bit of history in them. And all, all three cars look really cool together, and it's nice to be able to put three iconic liveries like that. You know, the, the green of the registration green of the Lotus, the gold leaf of the, the forty nine, and the JPS of the seventy two in one in one set. Yeah, it, look, it looks fantastic. It looks and the detail now now in your cars are, are phenomenal. Like the yeah, the amount of detail you can get into them, and you know, I've really yeah, really seen the last few years that the, the the cars really increasing in their. Uh, in, ha in their accuracy so so in terms of of how it works how do you go about selecting the cars how do you go right this is a set we want to put together uh and these are the cars we're going to do it like and, and then how do you go about kind of asking the manufacturers the licensee holders about about doing that so it depends on what car you want to do. So say we're looking at a modern car, um, say a Lamborghini Centenario we do, or a McLaren 720S. In that case, then, we already have a relationship with those particular manufacturers, and we basically look at 
what people like. What, what gets a lot of likes on Instagram? What do people like looking at on Twitter? What do they see in London and, and chase down the street with their camera phones and things like that? That sort of hypercar, supercar that people love for that part of our ca- part of our range because those cars are to appeal to kids. They're super resistant, they're strong, they're tough, they're not as detailed as the, the 49, the 72 or the, the 25 you see here. They're, they're, they're toys. They're designed for people to open on Christmas Day, play with it on Boxing Day, smash it into the skirting board, bounces off and, and it carries on going. So we choose those sort of you know, child-friendly scale electric cars just to make sure that the, a kid will see it on a shelf or in an Argos catalogue or on a website and look at it and go, oh, wow, you know, this is this is the coolest looking car. This is what I want. This is kind of like a Hot Wheels type thing and, and that's why they want it. When it comes to the things like the 25, we have to be a bit more careful because we have to make sure that, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a car we're going to invest a lot of money in. These tools cost a lot to, to produce a new car and it has to be something that people, again, are going to find exciting. I mean, we could do any old Formula One car from the 60s and 70s and it would look quite nice. We could do a, a, a you know, lovely old Matra or a, the Honda or something like that. And they're cool and they're iconic and they're, they're still, you know, something that will get people excited. But it needs to be, have a little bit extra. It needs to have that level of passion to it, which is why the 25 works so well. And we also this year have released a, a Tyrrell P34, the six-wheeler. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, it's got uh, six wheels. You... It's exciting. It's not been done that much as a slot car. 25 has not been done since the 60s. So it gives people that opportunity to have an excuse to buy it, to have that excuse of, oh, yeah, well, you know, this is a really nicely detailed scale electric car, buy this. And it also gives us that opportunity to do something that other people aren't, aren't doing at the moment. So, so in terms of like the heritage and stuff, so, so do you, like I say, so, you know, when, when you're selecting like the oldest of the, the, the younger generation may or may not recognise, do you try and appeal to like a, an age range that, that do remember it and go, actually, I remember those racing, that's what I grew up with F1 looking like type of thing. So how do you, other, you know, is that, is that how you go about it in terms of, you know, the heritage of F1 and another kind of a other you know not just F1 but touring cars or or any yes, kind of old Volvo 850s and Super Tourers. How, how do you go about selecting those 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 older generation of, of racers? Well, really, we look at the, sort of the racing world around us. So we just released or soon to be releasing a Mark III Capri. Um, we have data that Ford does really well. That all generations love Ford because kids like Ford because of of modern stuff, Focus RSs, you know, Ford GTs. Dads love Ford, no matter how old they are, going right back to Anglias, Cortinas, then Escort, Mark 1s, 2s, Cosworths, Sapphires, RS500s. You know, everyone seems to love Ford. So, sort of like a Capri, we knew that, well, Dad will like the Capri, Granddad will like the Capri, and kids, well, you know, if their dad gets excited by it, then they probably will as well. But we look at what attracts the, the crowds at race meets as well. You know, at Goodwood, the members meeting, the Jerry Marshall Trophy, that's got bigger and bigger every year, bigger names in it bigger crowds watching it, people absolutely love it. So we knew by doing a Mark III Capri, it can put into that sort of zeitgeist of people enjoying that Group 1 and very early Group A touring cars. And therefore we knew it would be a, you know, a good thing to do and a, and a, and a strong a strong runner. Yeah. Randomly, I've just had his son, uh, Greg Allmarshall, uh, drop me a message about doing his dad's cars. So, uh, yeah, Jerry Marshall, I, 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 the name I know of, so... Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got to do Baby Bertha, the, the great piece of special salute. Yeah, yeah. So he, it's just the coolest thing. Yeah, he wants, he wants, he wants, he wants a mixture of his cars and his dad's cars. So, uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely on the to-do list. Um, yeah, well, one one great thing about this job for me is that I can, you know, I love racing cars, especially some of the classic ones of the seventies and early eighties. So, it gives me an opportunity to, you know, do some of these cars, like the, the Capris and the Sierras and bit species that are. Maybe not Capri's, I'm a bit younger than that, but to be able to watch and that I've watched as a kid and, and now do them. You mentioned Super Tourers, and that's an era that we potentially look at doing in the future as well. That's my era of touring cars. You know, I grew up watching Cleland and, and Radisic. That was so, cool. So we've got a very basic outline to start off with. So it's just a continuous line going that way to that way with the three cars. So now to get the rest of the background and everything in. Um, so in terms of the actual artwork, this is the, the, bo- the box art. How does that... How does that get put together then? You were saying you, you research and you go in. Yeah, how how do you how do you to go get those images? How, how does it how does it start? So this one um, is a sort of make believe idea. These obviously never raced together. But what we do is we um, sort of brief in our designers and say, look, this is what we want to do. We want to capture all three cars. 
I'm on the inside of this box is going to be an image and a, the signature of Colin Chapman to sort of add some text, sort of push the fact that, you know, he designed these cards, he's the genius behind them. Um, and then to actually create the box art, we use a, a photo. So that's a black and white photo of the brand chapter start line. And then we superimpose on that. That is the CAD of the actual cars. So we design a lot of cars using CAD on a computer, obviously. Uh, and then we just drop those in, move them around to try and create a realistic-ish looking image. So brief it into our design guide. A chap called Tom made this. Uh, it's actually probably the best thing Tom's ever done. He, he does some great artwork all the time. But I think this just looks fantastic. And um, yeah, then he goes and does his magic and a week or so later I'll get an email saying, what do you think of this? That's that's pretty cool. So so it's, it's all so your 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 place is in is in uh, the south, isn't it? In um, Margate, I believe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're based in Margate. It's the old um, it's the old Tryon building. So it's been a, a toy factory since the 1950s. Um, so it's got great history. It's a nice old listed front of the building. So yeah, it's quite a cool place to work. It's a bit quieter than it was. There's no manufacturing there anymore, but cool place. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Because I, I remember, I, I if it's the same building. Um, I went there when I was much younger on a, on a factory tour, and I, it was the it was the coolest thing. I think we went on a holiday there. It was the coolest thing to go and see. Yeah, it's a cool site. If anyone is in in Margate, uh, if anything soon when all this um, virus stuff has finished, I've got a visitor centre where you can come and look at the railway stuff, the heritage stuff, and, and play some electric as well. It's a little cafe and a shop there as well, so it's quite a cool little attraction. And where the manufacturing was, we've now got full size locomotives out the back as well, so it's quite oh, yeah. an uh, interesting place to work. The locomotives aren't open to the public yet, but I presume they will be at some point. Well, that's that's really cool. So you turn it into like a proper like experience centre almost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're hoping that. Um, uh, that at some point they wouldn't be able to have some vehicles and stuff on display there as well. So it'd be really cool to have some cars that would don't scale electric on display there. But uh, yeah, no, it's that, just, just like motors at the moment. That's that's very cool. So what? So in terms of like the latest product, what's what's been kind of you know uh, in development for a while? What's what's, what's just come out? Um, and and what in terms of the, the kind of few, the, the the actual sets you can get? What's been the latest developments in in kind of in scale electric? Well, the biggest development we've got in sets is something called Spark Plug. Um, so, Skeletor because a toy, essentially, even through digital and things like that, hasn't really changed. You hold a hand controller and the car goes around the track as you press the trigger. What we found at events, we, we do some shopping centre events at things like Blue Water and the Metro Centre, and what we found there is that little kids don't actually play with, with guns anymore. They don't have an idea what a trigger does. And you hand a, a controller to a three or four-year-old child and they, they look at it with a bit of sort of surprise and what is this how does it trigger what how does it how does it work so what we've done is we developed a little dongle that plugs into the power base where the hand controller normally goes you download an app on your phone and, and rather than using a hand controller you can use your phone as a wireless control device to move the cars oh, okay. when you've got two of them you can play versus mode and you can boost the other person you can restrict them you can knock each other off and it records if you crash and it gives you a character optimization as well so we've got a batman joker set coming out this year you can play as any of the DC characters, Batman, Batwoman, Harley Quinn, all these sort of bits and pieces, Joker, Penguin, all these characters. And as the cars go around, knock each other off, it comes up with like a power on the car, you lose a life. So it's, it's, it gives us so much more gameplay and with wireless controllers, just by people using their smartphones. So it's much more like, you know, kind of an app-based app -based thing, but they've still got the control and learning the how, yeah. to, how to actually control the cars as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, the, and the best thing is as well, if you've got a, a small child who's used to playing on it with an iPad or a smartphone, and you want to have the old school feel of an old school controller, then you can plug a controller in against the smartphone and off you go, you can have one and, and the other. Oh, well, nice, it doesn't mean you have to use the modern technology, you can do it the old fashioned way. So yeah, old fogies like me can still uh, feel like feel feel the the, the way that we uh, you yeah, know I mean I've, I've still got a, I've got a scale electric in my studio and I, I yeah, it distracts me many an hour. because um, I used to have one when I was a kid, um, and I used to you know I used to have all of them all lined up in the in the, in the speed and, and how fast they they were going around the track and all sorts. So it's good to hear that the the product is developing with the times almost. So yeah, ab absolutely. I am with you. You know, the, the spark plug is really easy to use. You get the hang of it within about four or five laps on a small circuit. But you know, if I have it out at home, then I'll use a normal controller. It's just what you brought up with. Yeah, it's what you, what you use it. So in terms of like. Um, you know, develop into the kind of you know twenty first century and not twenty first century, but yeah, you know, just kind of develop with the times and such. So do you, do you have a brand ambassador? How do you work with 
with the race teams and stuff to to keep Skeletrix you know up to date with the uh, with what's going on on the track. Yeah, so first of all, we do have a brand ambassador. We work with uh, Andrew Jordan, who is a, a touring car champion, 2013 champion, and uh, current BMW driver for WSR. So working with Andrew is great. Um, he's a really nice guy to work with. He's got a lot of love for the brand, and his historic side of it is brilliant as well. Because you know we can um, we can move pass the ideas on to him. You know, it's easy to find in cars, and of course he races the Cortinas. We're doing one of his Cortinas this year, and a mini that he races going to be racing as well. So you know, it's working with him is really really cool um, in terms of the race teams I'm at a massive advantage to some of the other slot companies because in the UK and, and a bit in Europe and, and America as well if you ring them up and say oh, I'm from Scalettric can I come look at your car it nearly you know, 99 times out of 100 it gives you a positive response it's just like you nearly all the drivers nearly all the engineers and the team managers they played with it as a kid and you can get him to see some amazing stuff simply by just saying, yeah, I'm, I'm from Scale Electric. Do you mind if I come have a poke around? <laughs> They're like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. it, it normally follows with a... If, if, a, if they don't mention it on the call, it follows with an email about two seconds afterwards. Oh, by the way, can I have one? And it's just like, yeah, of course you can. You know, we have a, <laughs> yeah. a policy whereby if you're a driver and we do your car, we'll send you them. And we'll send them to the team and any of the major sponsors as well because you know, we, we can't afford to pay everybody who's involved in, in motorsport who we then do a car off, but we can, you know, give samples out and give them an occasional set and bits and pieces like that. Cause it's always nice to support the guys who, you know, if Andy and Jordan, Jake Hill, all these all these guys, if they weren't putting some of their hard earned and doing all the hard work with their sponsors to race, then we wouldn't be able to do the cars and, and you guys to buy them. So it's important that we give something to get back and I'd like to think that we're pretty good and pretty open with that. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I mean, over the last few weeks, you know, it's been really fortunate. To, I've been very fortunate to be able to to chat with a number of the drivers, including Andy. Yeah, and you know, hearing their passions and you know, seeing what they do, you know, off track. Because you know, obviously at the moment there is there is no racing, but they're still very much working hard to make sure their sponsors are happy. Their their you know, people. Yes, you know, so, you know, so when they are ready to race. They can, they can, they can go, yeah, and that's and that's what we all want, really. Is you know, we we, we want to see cars back in track and and Sundays having you know you know, having touring cars go around or F one or or whatever, really. So so what's been your your favourite? What yeah? You know, so recently I'm doing the DeLorean next. So was that uh, you know was that a labour of love that one? Yeah, because that that seems to be a really popular one that's been released. So, uh, full disclosure, because I won't live it down in the office otherwise, I haven't actually ever seen the Back to the Future films, and the DeLorean was an idea of the boss, not of me. Um, <laughs> I supported it. Like, I knew it was going to be a success, I knew it was a great idea, but I am... Um, he, he handles a lot more of the pop culture and the, the entertainment stuff, and I'm the, I'm the racing car sort of guy. So DeLorean's great, you know, we get some Back to the Future releases out of it, but no one ever slapped a number on it and raced it in that, guys. So, yeah. That's yeah. not so much me. For me, actually, it's the, the six wheel Tyrrells we've just released, the P34s, and my labour of love. We we looked at in um, we, we looked at doing it a little while ago, and we weren't sure it was really a feasible project. We did some extra work on it. We released it this year. I had the most brilliant visit when we when we did the car. Me and the designer, and actually two designers, went down and viewed an, an example which is actually based at Jody Schechter's house. He's he's still got one. So you know, on a Wednesday afternoon, a rainy Wednesday afternoon. To, to go down and see a Formula One racing team, who then leads you around back into Jody Schechter's house into his garage, where he's got not only his Tyrrell but a number of other amazing Formula One cars. You know that means that project will always be special to me. You know I've got to meet him. He's a really nice chap, really, really good guy to work with. So, you know that's, that's definitely been one of my favourite projects we've worked on recently. The DeLorean has been more successful just to get that in for the boss. <laughs> yeah, it's the right. but, you know, it's a very different beast, the DeLorean. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I certainly went and got the uh, when the the new Ford GT came out, and that the the level of detail in that one was was beautiful. So, was that another one that you went and and, and saw the car? And how and how much how how do you work with the teams? Do you have to use their CAD data, or how how does it work? So it really depends on the car. So for things like the Ford GT, uh, we actually got the cab data from Ford. Um, they provided it to us. We didn't go and look at one of those because when we needed to, they were off doing that because it's a worldwide based car, you know, races all over the place. We just never managed to make schedules meet, I don't believe, with, with the team. And I, I certainly didn't get to see one then. I saw one at Goodwood and a, a motor show and bits and pieces like that, but didn't get sort of a private look at it. With um, cars that are used more often around the world, so GT3, so things like the Aston and things like that and the Mercedes, 
for those, yeah, we'll go, we'll go and see the cars. We'll get the cab data from either Mercedes or Aston Martin, but we will also go and see them at, at a particular race team, which is, which is great because it gives the designers a chance to see the car in the flesh, really understand it rather than just on the screen, and gives me a chance to do some of the work with the team. You know, can we do your car? Can we have some delivery information? Can you provide us with some of that um, up front, which is nice. Yeah, so and so 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 going back to some of the old old stuff, because you've got like the Jägermeister and BMWs, haven't you, and and all sorts. So is it, do you, yeah, is it is it right to you? Do you have a favourite, or is it just you like you like them all for different reasons? Uh, no, I do like the Jägermeister BMWs. Actually, that's one of my favourites. The other one I really like this year we've got coming out is the Grand Good Sierra. It's got the Listerine sort of dragon on the bonnet, and that sort of era that those RS five hundreds and M threes. Uh, you know, that that's what I remember touring cars being. You know, sliding around under lots of power. Um, the, the Sierras are a really cool looking car then so that, that's one of my favourite this year you know it's not a high profile release it's not doing the sort of numbers that the DeLorean and the Tyrrell's have done and the new Mustang and things like that but it's a it's a really cool car that actually and the, uh, the little Andrew Jordan Cortina is a favourite as well just because I quite like the uh, I think it's quite cool that it it's, looks so nice and it's got a member of Take That Drive in it which is pretty cool as well <laughs> so that ticks into the box yeah, absolutely. It means I can do ridiculous puns on the uh, product description online, which is great. <laughs> so, um, so like from from design to development, like to yeah, from like what's the, how long does it does it take? Yeah, so you know how long? Yeah, I, I guess if, if there's the model, if it's like a color change, I guess it's quicker than it being, um, um, uh, th- th- than a whole new kind of tooling for a whole new model. Yeah, I mean, a whole new tooling for a model would take about say about 18 months from design start to the finished one being in the shops. In terms of a new colour scheme, that's a bit different. So on a, on a new colour scheme, what we do is we um, have a range that we sort out, we just finished it actually for next year, decide what colour schemes we're going to do, then we schedule them, and if we start doing the design of it now, it'll probably be in the shops around February, March, that new colour scheme. So a new livery doesn't take a pretty huge amount of time, but that can then be affected though by the license source. So if you're if you know if it's a if it's a pop bang mark one, and you as a license or don't like a bit of colour that we've done in it, or don't like a bit of this or a bit of that, then obviously you can slow that down, and we have to go back and change it, go back and change it, and that can then have a detrimental effect, we say, on when it's been released. But a lot of license stores are pretty good, pretty quick, and we can get stuff out, you know, reasonably rapidly in about nine ten months for a new livery. But then, of course, you've got to depend that on on shipping and um, and the factory and whether they get it right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what? I mean, I guess the, yeah. During this time, this kind of weird time we've been at the moment, has has sales increased? Has it been like more people getting out their scale electrics? Have you noticed? And yeah, more orders coming in. Uh, we've certainly noticed a lot more people getting out their scale electric. Yeah, a num- number of racing drivers who. Um, but, you know, using it as a bit of practice, you know, um, I've been getting it out. I know Andy's had his, his couple of bits we've sent him out with the kids to keep them occupied in a, on an afternoon sort of thing. But, yeah, a lot of people are getting them out. We've actually running a competition at the moment, a competition which is finished. It's just like deciding who's winning, who's won rather, using uh, Twitter and, and Instagram. But, yeah, a lot of people pulling their sets out of the loft, getting them out the spare room under the bed and putting them together and having a play. And that's, that's, that's great. You know, if it gives people a chance just to focus their mind a little bit on something else other than sort of worrying about the world and what's going on and that, that's great and that's exactly what I want people to take from, from the hobby and yeah but business is, seems to be going pretty well I, I don't know how much I can really talk about that as we're a PLC and it's come to the end of the year yeah. trade in but um, yeah it's been good you know thankfully the, the, the guys at the warehouse have, uh, have kept open and a massive thanks to them keeping the rest of us going really by being able to work and stuff and we're sending product out and it's yeah it's been well received and I, I presume there's, there's, there's quite a Kind of a yeah. I mean, I've been to a couple of like slot car collector fairs and whatnot because there's quite a quite a, a cult for it as well, isn't there? You know, kind of collectors who are who are kind of going back and re-getting the the cars that they maybe had when they were a kid, and but also collecting the new stuff. So I, I guess this yeah you know, these these box sets are, are are aimed more at the collector side rather than you know ones playing you know opening it up and playing and, and, and using it as a toy. Yeah, absolutely. I would probably guess that. Um, I think we're making either, you know, a couple of thousand, I think, of this, of this set worldwide. And I would reckon that as many as three quarters will never see a track. They are bought as collector pieces or as mm-hmm. sort of shelf collectibles. They're not bought to race. It's a shame because all three of those cars run pretty well. Um, but, yeah, the, the collector market for Scale Electric is absolutely massive. And people go nuts over the craziest things. So we, we get samples all the time from China, from factories of 
single colour mouldings, check stuff fits, um, test mouldings, check stuff's the right colour, and all little bits and pieces like that. And um, due to licensing, unfortunately, now we have to just destroy them and just go in a big bin and get, get smashed up. But back in sort of 10, 20 years ago, we used to sell them at um, events and at auctions and charity bits and pieces like that. And these, these specs are hundreds of pounds each. These, what we now just bin, I've got bins next to my desk just full of these cars that like these collectors would go absolutely <laughs> crazy for. And we just have to chuck them away. And it always makes me sort of smile at the, the sort of collector events and the swap meets and stuff. People passing these things around, changing big money, and I'm thinking, I have got hundreds of pounds sat underneath my desk, and I'm just going to bin it when I get back on Monday, because I need to clear some space on my feet. Yeah, so yeah, there'll be some collectors listening going, no, keep it. Yeah, yeah absolutely, it. Yeah, absolutely, you know, like, test DeLoreans in different colours we've got, and, you know, all different bit, bits of cars that the tooling didn't quite work properly, so they're absolute one-offs, and yeah, I'll bin them, because if it's not approved by the license, or the DeLorean, if it's not approved by Universal, there's no way that's going out the building, because if they find that, and without their permission and catch it, then we could be in a, a bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, going back to the artwork, is it, so is it, there was a, is it, is it all done by by one person? Is it, you know, is it one person? You know, was it a team of guys who, you know, guys and girls, obviously, uh, you know, in in the office who are who are working on that? How, how does that how does that generate? It's a, it's a team. So um, we've got a young couple of young chaps who do a lot of the the artwork for the car, and a young lady actually does a bit of it as well, as well along with her other sort of um, technical admin role that she does, and then. They do the artwork, so each car that we do, we have to design delivery as a PDF uh, to go out on an AI file to go out to China, which means basically I get them loads of pictures of the original cars or as many as I can. They design some artwork on a, you know, on a, um, on a, on a computer system. That then goes out to China, and then when it's all approved and we come to this stage, then again a couple of young chaps, the same chaps who do the artwork before, then we'll create these these images. Uh, and uh, I say that that looks really awesome. As a, yeah, as a as a you know kind of a tree, a tree of cars, it looks it looks cracking as a yeah. set. So hopefully you can kind of start seeing that it it it's taking place on the on the on the on the piece of paper now at least. So um, yeah, and, I'm really impressed. I like the, I like the white wall um, bit of tyres on the or the rims on the 49 you've just done. That's really cool. Yeah, no, it's getting it's getting there. It's getting there. So so in terms of a bit of the heritage of Scourge, how how did it? How did it start? What's the you know? How long has it been going on for? You know, I mean, I, I, I remember buying you know Christmas. I used to get a new car every Christmas and be really excited because my uncle would always buy me. A car. I mean, I kind of knew what car it was going to be because my, my dad would take me to the shop and go, "Which one do you want this year?" Type of thing. But yeah, we still wrapped it up and opened it on Christmas Day. Um, so, well, you yeah, know, what's the the heritage behind the brand? And you know, can you kind of explain? You know, give a bit of a bit of a, a kind of quick history of it. So I'm not an expert on the history of scale electric, I'll be honest with that. Some people are, and they know a lot about it more than I do, but it, it was founded in the 19, late 1950s by Fred Francis, who really developed a way of, um, you know, as, as you can see, the, the general idea of it hasn't changed. It's a, it's a toy car, electric motor in the back, and a little guy pin at the front that fits in a rail, electric rail that then powers the engine. Um, it was based originally down in Havant, I believe, in, in Hampshire, and then was bought by Trying in the, in the 60s and then and moved over to where it is now in, in Margate. And... You know, it's just, it had a heyday in the 1960s, really. You know, it was absolutely massive then, and in the 70s as well. It, it was the toy at Christmas year after year. And computer games have sort of superseded it in some elements now, although there is a computer game element electric with our arc system now. Um, but, yeah, that's sort of where it's grown from, where it's come from. And a surprising amount of drivers and most innovators sort of cut their teeth on, on scale electric. The first chassis that Ross Braun ever designed was scale electric cars for new cities. Like, oh, really? Well, yeah, um, Adrian Newey, uh, he also grew up with, with Scale Electric and modifying them and playing with them as well. You know, these sort of big guys who've done so much for motorsport and he, all the drivers that you speak to as well, especially at a certain age, they all either they didn't have Scale Electric, it's like the older ones definitely bought it for their kids and had their cars when they were at their prime in the 60s, 70s as well. So, you know, it has got such a rich history. It does feel like a real honour to be able to be continuing that along with new products. So, so, so do you get a lot of... Um... Yeah, do you get a lot of like requests coming in? Do you get people like kind of saying, "Oh, can you? Yeah. Could you remake? Could you remake this? Could you? Yeah, could you do that?" So do, do, do you get a lot of people going, "Oh, I had this as a kid. Could you? Yeah, is this going to be one of the new ones?" Yeah, all the time, and I love it. I think that's great. As soon as you start getting that on your social media, we get it a lot on Epics, but on, on, on Scale Electric, we're starting to get it more and more. It's brilliant. You know, as soon as we announced the DeLorean, it was, "Oh, great! Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this film? Can you do?" 
kit, Ecto One, can you do more Bond stuff, you know, and it's really cool that we get that because frankly it makes makes my job easier. You know, if, if people are screaming and shouting for a particular type of car, then yeah, you know, absolutely I love that because it, it gives me a, a good opportunity to say to the business, look, I need this bit of investment, this bit of money to get this license because, you know, okay, it's only fifty people, you know, in a thread of comments, but twenty five of them are asking for this. So yeah. I love that, and, and people should always do that. You know, email in, put comments on our on our pages of yeah, I like that Mustang, but why can't you do a you know a sixty eight or a sixty seven Mustang rather than another seventy one? You know, we love that sort of stuff, so it's so, great. So very much get you get you know, follow you know, like and follow and you know, get in touch via socials to, to to see your your what your latest offerings are going to be. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, we, and it's got to the point where we have um, drivers with some of their cars as well email in and, and say like, oh, can you do my car? You know. We, but um, quite a famous Jaguar owner and, and car um, emailed in quite recently. And it, yeah, it's something we have considered anyway. So it's, it's great to be able to, rather than me trying to find his contact details, I've already got them. So when we get round to doing that car, now I can just give him a shout. And I know he's got his permission already. I know he's excited about it. We can get the ball rolling. So what, 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 so what, what will the next steps for that? Will you, will you go and you know, go and see the car and chat to him and, and be like, right, this is, you know, this is how we're going to do it? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I've already had a phone call with the, with the guy and then we'll, we'll go from there. We'll have a chat. We'll go see the car. We'll take a load of photos of it, maybe scan it, it depends on the shape and we can get any good information from elsewhere. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. I was hoping to see him at uh, Goodwood and maybe a few other race meets, but uh, may have to be postponed a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, it, I'm sure it will happen. So, uh, so yeah. yeah. But we are near now. Would you like the scan it just a little bit at the top there, or just want it? Would you like it just uh, as the car? If we've got, if we've got time, yeah. Yeah, we've got a little, yeah, got a little, yeah, we've got a little time. Yeah, we're, as long as you're good for time, I'm good for time. That's all right. Because the, the, the Scanlatrix logo has had a bit of an update recently, hasn't it? Yeah, we went for a, a, a sort of black and grey, sort of posh looking logo for a little bit, and it's just not really, really suited with the brand. So we've gone back to the yellow and blue, and there's slightly different elements to it and stuff. So yeah, it looks much better now, I think. Yeah, it, it goes a bit nicer. I'm just going to add that into it at the top. It shouldn't be too long. Uh, so is it, have you been, uh, work, is it been working from home for a while then, or...? Yeah, been working from home since the middle of March. So it's I, I, I'm quite I'm really fortunate. I'm able to work from home without any problems whatsoever. The only issues, slight issues I do have are the fact that um, when samples come in, my colleague has to take a photo of them and send it across to me. We only get delivered to one house, and I don't don't live near him. So that's a bit irritating, a bit of an issue, and you know, a bit of a problem. But other than that. You know, I'm able to work from home without any issue whatsoever, except for being nagged for food by the cats and sitting far too close to the um, fridge. That is yeah, healthy, I mean, but other than that, yeah, fine. Yeah, our cat is, uh, yeah, I think she's just fed up with us now. I think she's just like, can you not be in our house anymore? Yeah, sure, it's... mine's worked out that if I'm on a call and then you're working on a meet or something, she comes on and headbutts me, I'm going to feed her, because uh, otherwise <laughs> her meowing at me is on the, uh, interrupting everybody else. Yeah, as, as is a... Uh, yeah, as is a bit, I don't know, a bit grumpy. She's yeah, but you know, she always has been. You know, um, but yeah, that's it. We're the weird and wonderful world of cats for you. Um, I'm really good at spelling things wrong when I'm when I'm not confident. <laughs> so uh, sorry for the slight. Uh, uh, right. Is there been any questions on the on the old live feed there for anybody? Uh, somebody has. Uh, I found that if someone rounds a corner too fast, your cars in particular have an issue with us. The cylinder where you pop the guide pin, it breaks. It used to be something to fix. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, we, we try and knock some plastic out of things, make them a bit lighter, a bit, but still keep them nice and resilient. And sometimes, obviously, if you do have a crack in the chassis with any of our new cars, which can happen, just contact, you know, any issues with any of our cars, contact our customer services team, and they'd be happy to either send out a new part or to advise you how you can fix it. So in any issues like that, just give us a shout and we can... Uh, we can go through that. I don't think there's any other questions on oh. here. Nope. No. Oh, someone's asked who we're chatting with. Uh, my name's Simon. I'm from Scalatric. Uh, uh, love to see some of the IMSA DPIs in slot car form. But yeah, so would I. Those would be really cool things to do. The only issue with some of those sort of LMPs is that per team they're sort of bespoke and we need to get lots of liveries out of a release. So it can be a bit of a difficult one to do. I guess, I guess it's got to be It's got to be a... a, a like when you create a McLaren, you can yeah you can do different colours on it. If it's one particular model, I guess it gets quite tricky. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, with things like the touring cars, for instance, we never did a Subaru Laval because 
they really ran in pretty much one livery the whole time. Yeah, there was the uh, Josh Price car, which was a slightly different livery, and then they did the black and white one, but it didn't really change that much. Yeah. Um, you know, it was all pretty much the same liveries year in, year out. Even the, the free team cars were the same. Whereas the Civics we've done and the BMWs, you know, last year, this year we're bringing out last year's brand new free series. Um, you know, Colin and Andrew run completely different liveries, and we hoped that this year they'd be a different colour and they are they're black rather than the, the white and the blue so it means we're going to get three very distinct liveries whereas we didn't really get that as much with the Subaru so that's why we couldn't do that car in the end and with the BMW as well there's a chance to use it in some different applications so that's you know how we choose some of the cars yeah All right. I think we are pretty much yeah we're nearly there so thank you so much mate for uh that's all right. For uh, yeah, taking some time out and chatting about it, it's uh, really cool. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit, of, just tweak that a little bit, so it'll just lift, lift the, lift the logo out a little bit. Um, so, so, but I, I think um, yeah, I think a pop band colour car would look look amazing as a as a Scala car. I think. Yeah, I'm sure we can sort something out. <laughs> I think I think it look it look amazing because. Um, yeah, there's been a, a few a few different liveries I've, I've designed, so I've just lost my pen now. Yeah, I think it's that one there. Um, there we are, perfect. Um, we did it. Yeah. Right. So what? So in terms of all your socials and stuff, so if people want to get in touch. What's your? What are all your? Yeah, what's your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? What are, what are they all on the on the on the network? Um, it's really just all at official Scaletric. So just um, go and search. You know, for, for Instagram, it's at official Scaletric. Facebook, it's again official scale electric. I think the same on Twitter. So just have a quick look at that in the search bar. We'll pop straight up as long as it's got a yellow and blue logo. Then that's us. Wicked, right? So da-da, there is the. Uh, I, I was really worried about this one because I was like three cars. That's really going to be really hard. Yeah, we did. We were a bit mean. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I was like, I was like, oh, that's a really after after yeah doing single cars and double cars. I was like, oh, three cars. That's uh, that's a. But I could. I, it wouldn't have been fair to like not do, don't you know just done one. It was about all three, and that's what the set. About. So when is when is the, is this set available to pre-order now? It's available to pre-order now, and it will be released. I would expect around October, November. So it makes a brilliant Christmas present for somebody. But yeah, it's available on our website and various other stockists as well to pre-order. So have a check out the Scalectrics website yeah. for all of that. That's awesome. I'll uh, just do that. Yeah. Du -du -du. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's got the hill, the hill thing in there. And then next up is going to be your DeLorean. I'm chat, chatting to, chatting to Alex about that. I'm sure he'll be. He's a, he's very much a a, a sci-fi guy, so I'm sure he'll have lots of uh, factoids about the film as well. Far more than I will. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's a he's a he's a he's a he's a good egg, Alex. And I think he wrote a a thing recently on. Um, on the uh, Drive Tribe about Skeletrics as well. So, I'm sure we'll point him to, the, to that. Right, so, there we are, chap. There is uh, number 294. Uh, there we are, is the, the legend, the, the genius of Colin Chapman, Team Lotus Triple Pack, Legends set. There we are. Hope you like. There we are. There it is at the, at the screen. There we are. And uh, I'll get that post on socials ASAP. So thank you so much for chatting, mate. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, and we'll catch up soon. Cheers, mate. Have a see you soon. Cheers, buddy. Thank you.